What internet marketing expert should you spend your valuable time listening to? Listen to someone who has over 20 years of web marketing experience and hundreds of website marketing success stories. That man is Aaron Sparks from Site Strategics. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. I have an article from Search Engine Land from Clay Kazier. And uh, this was a really sharp article, especially, hey, for for Halloween, right? Want to get into something kind of spooky. And what's more spookier than Google? <laughs> In a particular mindset. Bing? Uh, oh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's like just downright little, scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're still around. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought you just shared an article saying that they finally turned a profit. Yes, they have. They someone, have. someone told me that they saw uh, someone at the airport uh, with an iPad, and they had Bing on it. Yeah. And I said, well, it was probably a Microsoft employee. <laughs> 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 Boom-tsh. There it is. All right. Well, hey, part of being a professional SEO. Now, if you don't know what the term SEO is, well, let's back up for a second. Search engine optimization. Uh, it's how you groom a website's credibility internally of a con of content as well as externally from the links and the value that the rest of the world give you you can craft that to make a better value in the eyes of google google gives you its endorsement and you come up to the the organic search to the mm-hmm. top of those searches right yep. below the paid and below the local and below <laughs> the maps but yeah it's there <laughs> well part of the seo's job and, and and you know that's what we do we are an seo firm yeah, we have to be, kind of be a conspiracy theorist of sorts, right? We're required not only to possess these tactical skills that we execute, but also predict what's going to be happening. He said possessed. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the source of this information is often through analysis, right, of what we see, as well as what search pundits are actually saying as well. But it, has involved, it does involve a bit of reading between the lines, wouldn't you think? I think so. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. That was very, very intuitive of you. <laughs> <laughs> intuitive? Just, yeah. No, I said you were right. And it, it was very intuitive. Because <laughs> usually that's the case. <laughs> oh, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Exactly. All right. yeah. I mean, here's some, there's sure. some logical applications for kind of reasoning. you got to read between the lines here. So when, when, when Google says page speed impacts user experience, and then good user experience is highly correlative to good organic rankings, okay? They're not saying page to rankings, okay? But they are saying in two different sentences. Yeah. Because they don't want to give you the answer, the answer but you've got to right. make the equation happen, right? So, I mean, we can logically look at this, and there's 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 some logical uh, pieces uh, to the puzzle that they continually give out. And with the search engine professional industry, we're constantly giving feedback to ourselves because, guess what? They really don't tell us regularly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, of, of course, we know that site speed is a ranking factor now because Google has officially confirmed it. But for the longest time, guys, they were saying that it wasn't. Yeah. Now, you know, there's, there's even theories about why they weren't owning that. But they don't – they try not to give away, you know, what are the all, all the uh, ranking factors. In fact, we're, we're going to be going into a show soon of the 200 ranking factors on Google. And we're going to do it in little bites. <laughs> Because there's a lot. Do a a (laughs) 48-hour marathon. (laughs) And we're talking, (laughs) we're going to talk exclusively about each and every point. Well, how, you know, there's a lot of theories that are purely speculative in in nature, right? One one that fundamentally mistrusts a company that cites uh, don't be evil as part of its code of conduct. If you have to have that in your mission statement and code of conduct, I'm I'm worried. (laughs) Let's just say it. (laughs) Well, well, and and it's all sub, you know subjective too, right? Right. Mm-hmm. right. You know, some people think it's it's uh, uh, you know uh, Google basically utilizing everybody's content, right? Yep. yep. And monetizing it. Yep. Is evil, you know? So it's you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there's some top. <laughs> Google cons- conspiracies, and especially for for uh, uh, for Halloween season here, it's, it's today. So get out there, get some candy, and uh, check these things out. Uh, we're going to discuss a couple here real quick. All right, participation in AdWords improves organic rankings. All right, that's one of the oldest conspiracy uh, theories. Yeah. Okay, and if you spend any money in get in AdWords, they, you know, the theory is that your site's organic rankings will improve on search results, right? Right. So what do you guys think? 
Well, first, I'll say that that's a myth. Yep. Yes. But but second, yeah. it's a myth because if you do have a paid search ad mm-hmm. and a search yes, engine listing, exactly. you tend to get more click-throughs. That's right. So, uh, I mean, Google, uh-huh. Google's yeah, very I good. I got the first one. You did. Google's position is investment in paid search has no impact on your organic search ranking, right? So uh, th- there is those those key points. In fact, uh, a, a 2010 NYU study determined, like, check this out, p- a positive interdependence leads to an increase of expected profits for, for the firm ranging from 4.2 to 6.15% when compared to profits in the absence of this interdependence. Wow. That's pretty much saying exactly what you just said. If you have... Phew, because yeah. I didn't understand a dang thing you said. Interdependence expected profit. Yeah. If you're advertising your brand on your website, right? Your brand of your website may actually increase in brand searches and thus increase organic searches. But if you're advertising using AdWords to advertise your, your site's good content, it can actually result in increasing incoming links to that same content. If you got your brand out there with that ad as well as, as your organic ranking, mm-hmm. you are actually connecting with your audience in a number of different ways, mm-hmm. not just in one space. So it actually does in, in improve some things. All right. Another, the- another theory real quick here is... Google is deprioritizing organic rankings. All right. Now, I, the idea is an easy one. Google doesn't directly profit from organic rankings, do they? So their ultimate plan is to deprioritize those rankings in their search results. Well, if you look at the environment of the Google search page, right? Those results are getting so low or low on the. I mean, above the fold is Google Ads. Okay, the first three ads. Yep. You've got the local search engine three pack, mm-hmm. right? Maybe a map. Yep. So where are the organics? The organics are literally the next page down, the next scroll down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you better believe it looks like they're, and on top of that, Google carousels, right? This, that, the other. You better believe that the organics listings exposure is declining. It is actually being reduced there. So I, I, I have to say that's a. That's not a myth. That's a fact. They are deprioritizing, and they're reducing the amount of, of organics on that first page as well. Yep. All right. More uh, mo money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, check this out. Here's another theory real quick. Google's ultimate goal is to promote their own content. Right? Well, Google search results include more non-organic listing types than ever before, and we agree about that. Um, you know, additionally, Google, the corporation, now Alphabet, Inc., has acquired a few companies like ITA Software and Nest, right? It's a cool tool. And technologies like uh, Delivery Solution, Bufferbox, and Mobile Payment Processor Soft Card. Eh? That, that actually it does imply that they're positioning themselves as a retailer or at least a retail fulfillment provider. So how long will it be before they begin promoting that content over other companies that are in the same space? Well, I think they're going to have a buy button soon. Oh, yeah. It's on its way. It's on its way. Absolutely. (laughs) In fact, didn't they just announce uh, that's coming in their ads as well as... I I, got to pull that article up. Yeah, it's it's on its way very quickly, actually. You know, though Google denies prioritizing their own products in search results as an unfair business advantage, the company has commissioned a report which argues that legally... It can prioritize search. So, I mean, organizations from the EU, right, uh, to even review aggregator Yelp, they've taken issue with all this, and they're arguing that Google is using its search dominance to skew results. Well, I, I got to say that the, they're in business to make money, yes. right? It's their results. It's yeah. their results. Yeah. Their sandbox. <laughs> they're, they're making money off of their web page. Dang it. <laughs> 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 uh, that, you know, the, yeah. it's 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 going to happen, and these these self promotion features are going to be there because guess what? The consumer likes them; they wouldn't be there otherwise, right? So, I mean, if you want to play in in the sandbox, then you're going to have to play by their rules. All right, last one, then we'll jump out of here real quick. The U.S. government has a back door into Google. Now, if you're familiar with the PRISM surveillance program that was revealed in 2013, we learned that the U.S. government collects stored internet communications from companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and others. 
Some went on to suggest that the CIA, the FBI, and other agencies actually have a backdoor into Google so they can pull information at will. Eh? All right. So in response, Google, Google unequivocally stated that the U.S. government does not have direct access or a backdoor to the information stored on our data center. As far as they know. Well, while that the truth is that statement, yeah, you got and, that right. And it said direct access. Direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that like a? <laughs> all right, that's kind of a redundant statement. <laughs> it is also true that Google complies with a majority of the requests that are tendered by U.S. government. Okay, so they effectively do have a backdoor. Yes, exactly. Because it's not, can, it's not direct. <laughs> it's just yeah, you have to mail to another <laughs> agency, and then. Oh, it, it, they they absolutely do, and on top of that, you know, Google actually, uh, the thought leader Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen actually openly stated, or perhaps warned, in their book The New Digital Age that since information wants to be free, don't write anything down you don't want read back to you in court or printed on the front page of a newspaper, as the saying goes. It's just not a way to live. <laughs> He says, in the future, this adage will broaden to include not just what you say or write, but websites you visit, who you include in your online network, what you like, in quotes, and what others you are, what others who are connected to you do, say, or share. So, well, there doesn't particularly be, need to be a so, conspiracy here. So we're basically just screwed. <laughs> it's darn right <laughs> scary. <laughs> Well, and now the uh, <laughs> you saw the Senate just passed the other one. What's that? Yeah, the, I saw you shared that article. Yeah, the new uh-huh. the new spying even more. Yep, sure did. Yeah, sure and did. everybody, all you people listening out there that didn't call your senators, <laughs> you've done this to yourselves. Oh, it's terrible. Last thing, Google wants to dictate what is true. Now, we're not talking about filter bubbles here. We're talking about actually the impact of Google's speculative use of truthfulness or accuracy as a ranking factor. The issue is outlined well in the, in the Washington Post article, why some people are so terrified by the idea of Google uh, of the Google truth machine, right? In short, a Google paper had proposed a method of identifying factual, factually accurate websites and from that deciding which results to return for customer or consumer searches. The fear is that non-traditional ideas or interpretations of events will effectively be written out of the conversation if they feel if they fail to actually meet Google's model of truthfulness. So, right there, uh, you know, I'm going to say uh, there's, there's an entire Ugh. engine here that 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 you. I mean, it's still their sandbox, right? What do they? What obligation do they have to tell? Ju- just report things. I mean, they certainly could be in a space where they want to lift up any type of political agencies, uh, show a, a focus and a preferential focus on certain areas of content, right? They can, but I do think that that gets into, uh, what is it? The trade trademark. Yeah. Not, not trade. alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> alphabet <East. cereal>. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they got in trouble like in Europe, uh, over the regulatory oh, the, yeah, no right. issues right, and everything right, else. Right, right, you know, right. I, I, I do think that they, they they've always, right it would be on. like a newspaper, right? Yeah. I mean, it would be the same thing. If you're saying that this is uh content that is not touched by advertising, right. But you're reordering it based on revenue mm-hmm. i think that's basically the same thing as lying about about it and ultimately your yeah. co- your consumers drop off because they don't can't right. trust anything but, so I mean, but i mean you get into ftc yeah. you know racketeering yeah you, know, you get into trouble there too yep absolutely in fact they just settled a case uh, with india about uh, uh certain type of uh, search results coming up there so you know we also we talked about that maybe they're testing out <laughs> the market. All right. So, uh, the, you know, the only thing is here, is Google evil? Well, you, did you notice uh, Google's new corporate holding uh, company, Alphabet, eliminated the don't be evil mantra from their code of conduct? Did they really? They did. That's funny. <laughs> and I'll let that go <laughs> with wow. that particular point. All right. Hey, coming up. Our-